Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, Pro Physique Athlete. Today we're going to be talking about 10 of the biggest mistakes that intermediate lifters make that keep them from getting to the advanced level. For anyone who's lifted for a while, you'll know that your beginner gains are your best gains. You're going to make your best progress in your first year of serious training. Once people start getting into the intermediate level though, like after one to two years of serious training, a lot of people start stalling in their progress. How do you continue to build muscle even as the years go by and it gets harder and harder to do so? A lot of these are mistakes that people who've been training for a long time will still make. So listen up, even if you've been training for a long time. The first mistake that intermediates make is sticking to their minimalistic beginner programs. Obviously, if you start off with a certain training program and you make great gains with it, you're going to think it's the best program in the world. But the mistake is that people try and stick to the same program even after the beginner stage. There are a few components of this, but the first part is just having a very minimalistic setup in terms of your exercise selection. I remember as a beginner thinking to myself that all I would ever need for my legs was squats and deadlifts. And while you can get a lot of great gains from these basic compound movements, at some point you're going to want more variety. This is because different exercises target the muscle from different angles and with different resistance profiles. This will ultimately allow you to target different muscle fibers and thus you'll get better complete development of your body. I actually do like the idea of minimalistic training for absolute beginners though. It keeps things really simple and it's best for beginners to really master those basic compound lifts. The skills you gain from developing your technique on the basic compound lifts will carry over to a lot of different exercises later. What this means is you're probably going to need a program that has more than just two or three lifts on a certain day. And it means you're going to have to branch out from just doing squat, bench, deadlift, and rows. The next big mistake that intermediates make is not experimenting with volume. When you're a beginner, it's great to start off with a minimalistic program which has really low volumes. Sometimes even just a couple of sets for a muscle group each week. As a beginner, you will make gains with really low volumes just because you're so sensitive to the training stimulus. And I actually recommend that beginners start with low volumes because it will make sure that you're not overdoing it. And you'll have more space in your life so you're less likely to burn out. But beyond the beginner stage, you're probably going to have to increase those training volumes to continue seeing hypertrophy progress. Hypertrophy has an inverted U-shaped response to volume. This means that there is some optimal amount of volume for each muscle group each week and you need to find that out yourself. So what I'd recommend, if you've been training with low volumes, you're stalled and you still feel that you're recovering well, try adding in some volume. You want to do this gradually, for example, even just adding one or two sets for a muscle group each week and then running that for a couple of months and seeing how you do. Remember that you can overdo volume, so if you get to the point where you find that your gains are stalling and you're always tired and achy, then you might be doing too much. But remember, there's nothing magical about doing something like five sets of five. The right number for you might be three sets or six sets. You need to find that out and it varies depending on the muscle group. Third big mistake that intermediate bodybuilders make is only using strength training. When starting out, a lot of people will hop on a beginner strength type program. For example, something like 5x5, which tends to use low volumes and low rep ranges. This makes sense because you'll hear a lot of people talking about progressive overload. That is, getting stronger over time and that getting stronger over time will lead to better gains. The tricky thing about this is it's actually true to a large extent. If you're getting stronger, particularly in the moderate rep ranges over time, you are going to get bigger. But the problem is people think that training like a power lifter will get them their optimal physique and they don't realize that power lifting training will become suboptimal for hypertrophy at a high level. When you do lots of heavy strength work in low rep ranges with high amounts of weight, this is going to be very specific for strength. So it will help you get your numbers up on those main lifts. The problem is the efficiency trade-off. Heavy strength work is very fatiguing per unit volume. Let's say, for example, you worked up to a heavy 1RM of 315 on the squat. That heavy single could be quite useful from the perspective of developing strength. But let's say you compare that to doing a set of 5 with 255 pounds. With that set of five, you're gonna accumulate way more volume, especially if you look at volume from the perspective of sets times reps times weight lifted. If you're always lifting heavy, like in the one to five rep range, you're not going to be able to generate as much productive volume across the week in total. This is ultimately why more moderate rep ranges tend to be better for hypertrophy. You're getting a good amount of stimulus for the amount of fatigue that you're generating. And ultimately, fatigue will become a limiting factor as you get more advanced. Mistake number four, you're afraid to bulk. 
A lot of people start off doing body recomposition. That is, they're trying to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. And a lot of these people will use the gain-taining strategy, which means keeping calories around maintenance so your weight stays stable, and trying to build muscle and lose fat at the same time at that weight. This can work for a while as you're a beginner because you're so sensitive to the muscle building stimulus. But as you become more advanced, you're gonna get slower and slower progress from this method, and ultimately you're going to stall. The reason is, as you get more advanced, the bar for building muscle gets raised higher and higher. And it really helps to be in a calorie surplus to actually build muscle. This means that beyond the beginner level, you do wanna start running bulking and cutting phases if you want optimal results. The key with bulking is to lean bulk. People don't realize that you actually don't need that big a calorie surplus to maximize muscle growth as a natural. Even if you're a beginner, gaining something like 1% of your body weight per month will probably max out your muscle gains. So you don't need to be doing anything crazy like gaining 10 pounds in a month. Fifth mistake that intermediate lifters make is that they don't learn how to cut. This follows from the last point where you want to learn how to bulk and cut properly. The issue with bulking is, even if you're running a lean bulk strategy, that is you're gaining weight at a slow rate, you're still going to be putting on some proportion of fat. And eventually, when your body fat pushes up to a higher level, you're going to want to get it back down. You do need to learn how to lose fat properly. If you are in a higher body fat percentage range, like over 15% for men or 25% for women, I would recommend trying out a cut. To do this properly, you need to create a calorie deficit and you need to make sure you're getting in enough protein. If you wanna do things properly, the two biggest parts from a diet perspective are getting into a calorie deficit and having enough protein. If you've never run a diet before, I'd recommend starting off with an open-ended approach. So not necessarily having an exact stop date or a certain body weight that you need to hit, but just starting off, setting your protein and systematically reducing your calories coming from carbs and fats till you lose weight. This point is tied intimately with the last one because if you don't learn how to cut, you'll always be afraid to bulk because you'll know that when you get into higher body fat percentage ranges, you're not gonna be able to do anything about it. Learning how to get into a calorie deficit properly will give you a lot of confidence to run bulking phases and really add on that muscle mass. As long as you're at least maintaining performance in the gym, you're not gonna be losing muscle. And if you're continuing to progress in the gym, you might even be gaining muscle. The next mistake that people make in the intermediate stage is that they stop developing their lifting technique. A lot of people will learn basic movement patterns and then think that they're the gods of the gym. You are always going to be able to improve your technique, increase your mind-muscle connection, and try out new exercises. I call this the cocky personal trainer stage. You've probably seen this a lot where you see the personal trainer or someone online who has learned how to squat and deadlift pretty well, and then they think they know everything. You always wanna be trying to improve your lifting form and improve your connection with your muscles. This is one of the ways that really high level pro bodybuilders continue to improve. They go out and train with other pros and learn techniques and lifting tips from them. The good thing is we have the internet so you can always learn off of YouTube. Obviously, if you're on this channel, you have the right idea. Number seven, when it comes to our intermediate lifting mistakes is being stuck on basic progression schemes. A lot of people will start off using a linear type progression scheme. That is trying to add weight with every workout. And this is going to be amazing as a beginner because it's the fastest way to actually progress. When you're adding five pounds to your squat every workout, you're gonna feel amazing and also grow a lot of muscle. But beyond the beginner stage, you're not going to be able to progress that quickly. You need to be ready when that happens and start moving to more advanced progression schemes. What happens is a lot of people will try to keep running that same beginner program. They will try to reset the program when it stalls and that might work for a while. For example, a lot of beginner strength programs will have a reset where you drop some weight and then you work your way back up again. But eventually the problem is, is that the rate of progress is just set too fast. You can still progress linearly in a slower fashion. For example, instead of adding weight each workout, adding weight every other workout. Or the other option is to try a different progression scheme. After linear progression, you can try double progression. This is where you alternate advancing different variables. The most common example is advancing reps, then weight. So for example, choosing a rep range like eight to 12 reps, adding a rep each workout, so going from eight to nine to 10 to 11 to 12 reps. And once you hit 12, you add weight and come back to eight reps. Eventually you might wanna try more advanced progression schemes. One I like is called wave loading progression, where you add weight and drop reps each workout and then you come back after a certain cycle. For example, 12 reps with 80 pounds in week one. 
10 reps with 90 pounds in week two and eight reps with 100 pounds in week three. Then after week three, you come back to 12 reps with 85 pounds. So you've added five pounds over the course of three weeks. After wave loading progression, there's triple progression. So this means you're advancing the variables of weight, sets, and reps. So this means you're progressing the different variables of weight, sets, and reps independently. Ultimately, you want to choose a progression scheme that allows you to progress as quickly as possible in a sustainable manner. What this means is that you can actually sustain that rate of progress over months at a time. If you're trying to add five pounds to your bicep curls every workout, you're going to stall out in a few weeks. And if you keep banging your head against that progression scheme, you're either going to stall or run into chronic overuse injuries. Mistake number eight, a lot of people will read online that eight to 12 is the magic rep range for hypertrophy and they get stuck in that zone. As I said, moderate rep ranges somewhere between six to 20 tend to give you the best trade-off of stimulus and fatigue. And that actually is a pretty broad range. So you do wanna make use of it. The key thing about rep ranges that you need to take away from this is that different exercises all have optimal rep ranges. And this is something that will vary depending on the person. There are some general principles to this. So heavy bilateral compound movements using free weights like barbells and dumbbells will tend to work better with lower rep ranges and heavier weights. Meanwhile, machine movements tend to work better with higher rep ranges and lower weights. You can look to my free program templates for some inspiration, but ultimately you wanna be playing around with rep ranges to find out what works for you. The way to figure out whether a rep range is good is, first of all, does it allow you to progress? If you're trying to grind away on 20 rep squat sets, you might find it relatively hard to add weight. You'll also want to look at whether you're getting a good pump and if you're really feeling a good burn in the target muscle. For example, you might find that doing really heavy low rep lower raises might just not give you a good pump and burn. Number nine on our list is not trying new techniques. This has been a common theme to this video, but a lot of beginners will just get married to the program that they started out with and not change anything. Following the basics of using heavy compound movements applied with progressive overload will get you really far. But you do want to start trying out some new techniques as you get more advanced. A good example of this that I'd recommend you check out would be metabolite techniques. These are techniques that deliberately attack the metabolic stress route of hypertrophy. So for example, training in higher rep ranges like 12 to 20 or even 20 to 30, using drop sets, which is a personal favorite of mine, doing something like supersets where you alternate two exercises training the same muscles, or using blood flow restriction training. What I'd recommend is that you keep the core fundamentals of your program in place. So progressive overload in the heavy compound movements in moderate rep ranges. But then you add a small component where you're testing some technique. That way you can systematically see if something is working or not. I do this with my exercise selection as well. So I have a pool of my most favorite exercises that I build most of my programming off of but I might take one exercise for each muscle group and throw in a wild card exercise, something that I haven't tried before or a new technique tweak. I won't always be doing this for all muscle groups and giving myself the opportunity to unlock new growth. If you find it's not working, that's fine. Just substitute it back for something that you know is tried and true. Our 10th mistake here that intermediate lifters make is trying to run advanced programs. This is the opposite problem that we had before with intermediate sticking to their beginner programming. And that's the tricky thing about being an intermediate. You can either run things too beginner or you can run things too advanced. Advanced programs are ones where you'll start seeing people running very fancy techniques. They might be using boutique exercises like single arm cable work, and they might be using a lot less of those heavy free weight compounds. There are a couple of components to this. First of all, advanced athletes have a very high skill level and mind muscle connection. So they're able to get a great stimulus even using light weights. Second, at the advanced level, a lot of people are strong enough that they'll actually produce so much fatigue with those heavy lifts that they need to gravitate towards those lighter exercises. Third, at an advanced level, people have found exactly what works for them and they might be using a certain special intensity technique that works for them but probably doesn't work for you. Finally, a lot of those people have outlier genetics or they're on performance enhancing supplements. So it might be working for them regardless. And the other thing is people on performance enhancing supplements need to train lighter relative to their absolute strength. This is because the steroids allow their muscle to grow so fast that it actually outstrips the ability of their tendons to actually develop. So if they really tried to push progressive overload in low rep ranges on heavy movements, they would actually run into the tendon tears. When someone tears multiple tendons like their quad or bicep tendons in the gym, it is a pretty good sign that they're on something. If you're still listening here, what changes have you made to your programming to continue seeing gains? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to improve your training further, check out this video where I share some other training mistakes that a lot of people make and that you might be making. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel to level up your knowledge and transform your physique. And we'll see you next time.